Hi everyone, a very warm welcome back to Mech Tech. We're back on the cab today and I'm not having a lot of luck lately. This actually happened, if you've seen my previous videos, before the Cavalier and before the rear bumper. So this, this one's a long-term sort of uh, incident, if you like, between me and a big corner curb that I was thinking to myself, I mustn't hit that. Three seconds later, I hit it. <laughs> so there we go. So we've got to repair the front bumper. We've got the bit that came off of it, um, which hopefully we can get to stick back on again. First job is to get the front bumper off. We've got a new fog light to go in there because that one's completely smashed. And we need to obviously get the front bumper sorted out because I've got the overhaul next Wednesday and it ain't gonna pass like that. So let's not uh, waffle on, let's crack on, get the front bumper off and get some repair work done. Right, I've got Lucy in the back hoovering away, cleaning out the inside for me, so that's good. To get this front bumper off, I have took it off before and I'm trying to remember how I did it. Now I know you've got to take the grid off, so that's gonna be the first job, just these three 10 mil bolts and it's got two little hooks that hook in the bottom there, so that just comes out. There should be two screws in the front bumper, one here and the one here which I've already taken out because of that bit that's missing. Um, obviously same on this side. There's one there and one lower down. And I think from memory there's three bolts underneath that grill that you have to loosen but not take out fully and it just slides out I'm pretty sure. So obviously that will be, uh, time will tell on that. I can't remember exactly how it did it. So I'm going to get the grill off, get those screws out the corners and then see what else we need to undo. I can't remember exactly. I think there might be some fixings in here as well, which we need to obviously uh, sort out. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a fiddle, but we'll have it off in a little while, hopefully. Right, there we go, that is the front bumper off, as you would have seen. Um, there was also two 10 mils which go in these corners here, which go up into the front wings, just so you know. So you've got two screws in the arch, two 10 mils on the top, three 10 mils in the middle, and there's supposed to be fixings that go in these little bits here, but they never seem to be attached for whatever reason, don't know why. I've took the foam damper off as well, that just obviously pulls off. It's got a little bit of a chunk out the back of it, but nothing to worry about. What I have got to sort out, which I've now found though, is on this front cross member, I thought it was a bit bent. You can see this side's nice and straight on that corner where those holes are. This side's got a bit of a kink to it. So I just need to get a pair of um, probably uh, adjustable ply, uh, adjustable spanner on there, nice and tight around the metal, and we'll just tweak that back up again. It should be absolutely fine. So we'll do that, and then we'll get to repairing the front bumper. Right, there we go, that is nice and straight again, well, I say nice and straight, it's more than acceptable for a panel you're never going to see under a bumper, put it that way, and it's not going to make the bumper look distorted. So now that's sorted out, I might just give this a quick buzz back with a wire brush and put some paint over that, stop it rusting, um, and now we can get on to sorting out the front bumper. So let's go in the garage, in the relative warmth of the garage, and sort that out. Right, with the bumper in the garage, you can see obviously the damage on this bottom corner here. Now I have actually had this taped up for a few months, which is why it's in such a state. Um, and it's Gorilla tape, so I've got to try and get this off again. Now I may have to get a heat gun on it and heat it up. Oh, I don't know, it's coming off, sort of. And you'll see that there's another section which is cracked. So there's a split that runs right the way along here. And then there's obviously the bit that came off the bottom underneath here as well. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be a case of what I'm, what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do. Now, this isn't ideal because usually fiberglass doesn't take the plastic bumpers very well, but 
because these bumpers are not the ones that are very good with those hot staples I'm not confident in just using the staples so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hot staples on it to initially to hold it all in place I'm then going to rough up the back of the bumper with a belt sander so it's got a nice key to it and then I'm actually going to use some fiberglass matting and resin which is the same stuff I used on the old Reliant van which the whole shell is made out of effectively um, and we're going to reinforce it with that from the back and then obviously well, then we can come back around to the front and obviously um, sort out the front bit with the cracks and whatever else and repaint this little section so that is going to be the plan um, whether it's going to work or not we'll obviously find out in due course but that is what I'm going to do so I'm going to get the rest of this tape off of here get that fog light out and then we'll flip the bumper over I might even rough it up with the belt sander first just so that I don't disturb the staples too much because they're not that great in staying in there to say on this type of plastic for some reason it's very waxy plastic this whereas the other stuff is um, it melts better and it obviously when it melts it melts around the staple and holds it really nice and strong whereas this doesn't do that so much it sort of just melts and goes a bit manky so right we're getting there you can see this section here that I'm talking about there's one bit of tape holding it hang on get a bit of heat on it and uh, hopefully it'll get rid of all that glue once I get that off right, you can see that bit there obviously where it's become detached so that's the bit we've obviously got to repair as well so next thing I'm going to do is unbolt that fog light it's just got held in with one ouch that was sharp it's just held, it's held in with actually two bolts on the back undo those two that will come out the front way and then we can obviously get all this repaired and hopefully looking A1 again well as A1 as I can make it anyway so there we go I'll come back to you in a minute Right, there we go you would have seen in that bit of time lapse all, all the staples in as many as i'm going to do for now now what i think i'm going to do is i'm actually going to fiberglass this bit first so i'm going to cut all these little ends off fiberglass this section this crack crack all the way along first I've got to put a couple of staples along here actually um because when i've got the other piece over the top it's going to cover it which is going to make it harder to apply the fiberglass so you can see on that side it sort of overhangs it a little way where the fog light is so I'm going to get this side, I'm going to put a couple more staples in along here, get this side all roughed up with a belt sander, get some fiberglass matting on the go and some resin and we'll obviously do along all the way along this edge and this crack first, let that set, let it go hard and then we'll move on to doing this other piece that's missing at the moment and get that put back on. Let's carry on. Right, I'm going to change tacked ever so slightly as you can see I've roughed all that up with the belt sander so it's got a bit of a nice key to it and I've also done the same with the bit that's broken off so what I'm actually going to do now I've done that is I can obviously get to the inside pretty easily with a brush for the fiberglass itself um, it was just the belt sanding bit I wasn't sure about so I'm going to actually hot staple this bit back to the bumper now as well so at least it's all in one piece and then I can lay the fiberglass in with the bumper sort of laying flat and it can all go in in one piece and it'll make it a lot stronger and obviously we'll do a few layers of that like I said before, fiberglass and plastic bumpers don't usually play well together, but I'm running out of time and I haven't got a lot of choice, so it is what it is, I'm afraid. I know it's not uh, ideal, but hopefully it'll, it'll work um, with any luck. So I'm going to get this hot stable on the same as you saw me do on that bit, and then uh, we'll go from there. Right, I've set up a little makeshift workbench out here, so I'm off the ground. And as you can see, that is the bumper back together in one piece again at least so it's not mega strong which is why I want to go over it with the fiberglass because as I say these staples are not very good in this type of plastic they're sort of in there but they're they're very weak so 
as you can see obviously I've scuffed it all up with the uh, belt sander and I'm going to get some fiberglass cut off of this roll now get the pit pieces to uh, fit in them gaps probably do about maybe two or three layers of it and uh, hopefully that will make it nice and strong so I'll come back to you when I've got some pieces cut out right we've got loads of bits of fiberglass all cut to different shapes to go around this area here Lucy's out here with me she's just um, hoovered all that out for me got all the dust out and we've just panel wiped it down so we're going to mix up some resin we've got some new resin in a hardener there and Lucy's going to help me and we're going to try and get all this fiberglass in so I'll stick on a bit of time lapse and hopefully once we've done it it'll be nice and strong with any luck top banana Right, you're on Lucy cam, as you can see. Go back, come back a little bit, Lucy, you're a bit too close. There you go. We've done that whole area with two or two and a bit layers here and there, obviously all crossing over and everything else. And you would have seen us use this roller, which is very important because it's got little spikes on it, and that is what you use to get all the air out of the fiberglass. So when you use that, it pushes all the air out, allows the resin to soak through the matting, and obviously then that obviously will create a strong bond if you don't do that it can be quite weak because it will get air inside it um, which will then allow sort of contaminants and whatever to get underneath it in time and then it will fail so that is a very important step in in your fiberglass in as, as I said before fiberglass and plastic bumpers not ideal but we'll see what this is like once it's dry see how strong it is and go from there top banana Right, it is the next day. As you can see, that has been going off overnight and it is all nice and hard. Now, I've actually added another piece onto here because it had a previous repair on this bumper and all they've done is repaired it from the outside with filling and it's starting to crack again. So I've given that a bit of reinforcement behind that bit as well. And I've also added an extra little piece in this corner here because that bit wasn't quite going to the edge. So I've put that in this morning and that's now dry as well. So if we can flip the bumper over now, it's nice and solid. He says, a bit cracking in half. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, and as you can see we've obviously got a crack running right the way along here and up there and then the other one runs along the top here and in that bit there so we are on to the stage now of sanding it all down I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to deal with this crack yet because obviously I'm going to need to put some filler in it so I may have to open it up slightly with a Dremel which I know is a bit counterintuitive because obviously I've just repaired it but if you just put it on that it's probably not going to take very well because there's no gap for the filler to sort of grip into if that makes sense so I'm going to start by sanding it down with a DA get that all sort of sanded down obviously we're only going to go up to this line in the bumper here um, as far as painting is concerned um, and I might try and lose it either in this section here or, or wherever but for now I'm going to start by um, getting this sanded down with a DA as I say and uh, see what we end up with and go from there so it is coming along this it's back in one piece now it's very strong I think that the fiberglass seems to have worked well, even though it's on a plastic bumper. So, fingers crossed. Obviously, it needs a bit of tidying up under here where we've got edges and things, but I can do that with the sander when I've got the sander out or with a, a grinder or whatever with a flat disc in. So, we are progressing. We just need to obviously get this all sanded back now and get some filler going. I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, there we go. That's the stage we're at the moment. I've got all this sanded down. I went over it with 80 grit to start with, then a bit of 120 then 240 so it's nice and blended out over the paint now obviously I've V'd, not V'd it but I've grooved this in slightly with the DA or either side of the crack to obviously allow a little bit of room for a little bit of filler to sit on there I'm still undecided whether to go over this I might go over it very lightly with a Dremel 
just to sort of open that crack up very slightly the reason i didn't do that to start with is because i wanted obviously the two pieces to meet nicely first of all because they were the shape they were when they snapped if that makes sense so now i'm going to just i think i'm going to just run a very slight groove along here and along here along that main crack and also possibly along that one there to obviously give the filler somewhere to go then we can get some filler on the go so it's progressing nicely hopefully it won't look like I've done it once it's done. <laughs> With any luck. So yeah, I'll come back to you when I've made a bit more progress. Right, there we go. I've used a little uh, cutting wheel to show you on the end of a Dremel there. Just a little carbide cutting wheel. Not gone very heavy with it. But it's just made a groove along the crack to obviously allow it to have somewhere for the filler to go. You can see in there as well. Mrs. Mectech's just coming. Hello, Mrs. Mectech. <laughs> Such a plum. <laughs> So yeah, we've got a groove right away along there, um, just to allow a little bit of space for the filler to sit in there nice. Um, and hopefully that should be um, nice and strong. It's still strong, obviously, with the fiberglass on the back, it ain't going anywhere. So that little groove won't make any difference. Now I'm a bit undecided now. I've got either got bumper filler I can use, which is supposed to be flexible, or I've got normal filler, which is the stuff I normally use, which is Evercoat Rage Gold, which is supposed to be for any substrate. So I'm half inclined to go with the Evercoat just because I like it and I know it sounds down nice. So. That's going to be the next stage. I'm going to get some filler on and then go from there, obviously. Right, this is what I'm going to be using Evercoat Rage Gold. I've used this a lot over the last couple of years. I really like it. It's nice filler. It should be okay on the bumper, I think. It's quite flexible. Um, it's supposed to not shrink either. Now, with a lot of fillers, it says a golf ball size to a pea size of hard and all that sort of thing. If you can see on there, it actually does it in uh, like a line on, the, on this stuff. So you basically you make like a pool of filler in a circle, as circle as you can get it, and then obviously you put a line of hardener over the top of it, and that should be about right. So, you get a bit of this. In fact, I'm gonna get a different scraper to scoop it out, just so I don't get it all over my scraper, spreader rather. Which you tend to find otherwise, you get, get it all up the sides of your spreader and then you can't work with it very well. So we get some of this on the old onion board put it off a bit I don't know how much we're going to need I'll go with that for now because you'll always find I didn't mix up too much than what I really need so right so if you get that into some sort of a circle something like that I might usually just put a line across the top Something like that. And that usually is pretty good. You'll see it change colour because this hardens dark blue. It'll go like a funny green colour. Obviously make sure it's all mixed in nice. And sort of scrape it all from the bottom because otherwise you end up with a load of hardener at the bottom and then you never it never gets mixed properly. So you're basically looking for it to all change colour a nice even colour. All the way through, so there's no sort of streaks of harder in it anywhere or anything like that. So I was gonna, I was thinking about, I've got some, what they call bumper filler, but this stuff's so good. I think I'd rather just go with the stuff I know, you know. And with this obviously you want to get it so it's as smooth as possible so you've got the least amount of sanding to do as possible if that makes sense now i'm no expert but just what i've sort of found out from doing stuff like this over the years you know obviously you want to have enough on there to be able to sand it back so that you can get a nice even finish. Get it pushed in to that groove first of all, like that. I usually, out of sort of practice, just put a little bit more than what you really need because I'd rather, rather have it on there and be able to sand it back than having to keep going over it and over it and over it. 
some professionals will probably tell you different, but that's just going what I've sort of found out over the years. All this because of a booming curb. <laughs> Never mind. Here's what it is. Can't do anything about it now. Just got to make the best of it and repair it. So. Someone commented on one of my videos the other day. Actually, that no, was on a picture I put on Instagram of the um, rear end of the cab that I had the boot done on by a, a professional dink guy, which is a future video you're going to be seeing. And he said to me, Blimey, he said, What have you done now? He said, Have you, you're going to need uh, extra driving lessons soon, you know? I was like, Yeah, no, this one actually wasn't my fault. Someone hit me for a change. So, <laughs> there you go. It's one of them things, isn't it? Probably a bit thick, definitely a bit thick there. All the professional uh, body shop workers out there now are thinking you're doing it completely wrong. Yeah, doing what I know, so any advice is always uh, taken on board. My mate Brian, he said he did a lot of the work on the Cavalier for me. When I worked at the uh, full dealer, well, actually, no, it was after I left the full dealer, but we did it at the full dealer because I wasn't long left from there. And he's absolutely mega at filler work, so if he ever watches this, he'll probably think, What is he doing? But there we go, <laughs> is what it is. As I say, you just want to get it as smooth as you can, in as best shape as you can. I've got to get some in that hole, there's a little hole there where there's actually a bit of plastic missing, but. So there's fiberglass behind it so it should be uh, strong enough to have the filler in there on its own you can use your finger to wipe it in as well like that it's a nice smooth finish this is Mectex at the door again what's the matter just please it's made me some lunch how about that Gross. lovely oh I love the smell of filler right so we've got this in a rough sort of shape now like I say I usually leave a little bit extra on top of it because I'd rather be able to rub it back into the right shape than not, if that makes sense. I've got excessive amounts on there. Once that's rubbed back, it'll probably be less than a mil. Yeah, you can. I found that with a, when I've been watching Brian in the past. Lose your finger in the spaces you can't get spread of luck in there. And you usually get it pretty smooth. Right, I'm going to leave that like that, let that set, and we'll obviously then see a bit, once it's dry and I've done a bit of sanding on it if it looks any good because obviously I don't know what it's going to look like yet. Right, I'll let this set, I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, this is it after my first initial sand. It doesn't look too bad, pretty smooth. There's a little bit of work to do in here on this edge. There's a couple of bits where I've obviously uh, got some divots in the filler there. And there's a little bit under there I've missed. And there's a little bit there which leaves a little bit more as well. But on the whole, not bad for a first coat. Um, so I'm going to give that another coat of what I've just done basically. Try and get it that little bit smoother. Get it that little bit more flowing. Um, and hopefully one more coat with any luck should do it. You can just see in there as well. Um, it wants a little bit on that edge as you can see it's got a couple of uh, divots in it And it wants a little bit of smoothing out just in here as well It's not too horrendous, but it just wants a little bit more just to get it right So yeah, I'm going to carry on the way I was when I showed you in the video a minute ago with the filler um, And obviously uh, give it another coat and go from there Right there we go. That is the finished filler work. I think I've got it as best as I can get it um, It probably isn't a million percent perfect but I've got it as best as I can so I'm hoping that's going to be good enough so next job now you're going to shock you all now I'm going to have a tidy up I'm going to get rid of all this off the off the floor all the stuff I don't need and I'm going to have a little tidy up and I'm going to have a sweep up and then I'm going to get this thing all wiped down with some panel wipe scotch up a little bit along the top here so we can paint basically this whole section up to the edge of the number plate probably because um, they're the two smallest areas we can lose it on down here and this little bit here so I'll probably go up to there so we'll scotch this up 
obviously I've got gaffer tape on here at the moment so I didn't hit the paintwork on this top half because obviously I was sanding I didn't want to go anywhere near it so yeah uh, we'll do that then we'll get it all masked up and then we can get some probably I'll probably go over it with a little bit of filler primer first of all just to make sure that there's no undulations and little divots and whatever else that I can hopefully if I need to fill in with the uh, filler primer get that obviously dry give it a little rub down maybe with some wet and dry and then get it probably remasked again and then we can get some colour on it so fingers crossed it carries on going as well as it has done <laughs> let's carry on right there we go we're all panel wiped down scotch padded masked up all that malarkey so I'm going to give it its first coat of filler primer now um, and we'll see obviously what it comes out like it's not going to be obviously do it in one coat so I'm going to do a few thin coats so it dries fairly quickly got a little heater on down here so hopefully it'll dry fairly quickly and uh, we'll see what it looks like once the primer's dried top banana Right, there we go, that is three coats of filler primer. As you would have seen, I've just given it a wet sand with some 600 wet and dry. Um, obviously did it wet, and it is looking really good. It's lovely and smooth. Now I've got a couple of imperfections, one little divot there, which you can probably just about see. Um, and uh, there's a couple of little marks here. But bearing in mind, this is a workhorse, this cab you know it's not got to be absolutely show quality I mean obviously I want to get it as best as I can but I need this back on the road tomorrow so um, you can see unfortunately I missed a little bit of filler rubbing down on that feathering that edge out there which is a bit of a shame but as I say I need it back on the road so I've kind of got to pull the reins in a bit of, of how far I go with it you know um, I just need it to be roadworthy and look tidy and, and all the rest of it so I think I'm going to go with that um, that, that bit there is bugging me if I'm honest but um, yeah so I may may do something with that but if not then we'll put some black on it and see what it looks like go from there Right, there we go, that is it after I think about, I've, I think I've done three coats of black, maybe four. Doesn't look too bad, obviously this is only base coat, it does need lacquering yet as well. But considering it started off with no corner, <laughs> it doesn't look too bad I don't think. It's not perfect as I said before, but for the time I've got to do it and as I say I need it back on the road. It's been off the road for a couple of days so me doing this and faffing about there's that little bit on the corner there you can just about see it it's got a little little mark in the filler there where i didn't quite get the edge feathered out nice but it's one of those things it'll have to be as it is so next stage now is to get some lacquer on it i've got some of this 2k lacquer in a can and stuff with a little ring pour on the bottom you pull the ring pour out it releases the hardener into it and then it's obviously got not very long shelf life once you release it but we only need it for this corner so I'm going to get this sprayed on there and hopefully it will look alright and nothing's going to react. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Let's carry on.
Right, there we go, it is the next morning, it's unmasked and considering it came out of a spray can I'm pretty pleased with that, that's not too bad at all it actually makes the rest of the bumper look worse, if you look here <laughs> it's nowhere near as shiny as my bit so I'm going to need to give that a proper good old polish up with some compound but I'm going to do that when it's back on the cab so that it doesn't go everywhere so now I need to get that fog light fitted back in there, it's just two screws and then we can get this back on the cab and get it back on the road where it needs to be earning me some money <laughs> so I'm going to get this uh, fog light in and then we'll get it back on the cab right that is the new fog light in as you can see there and I've also given the back of the bumper a coat of the old black stone chip over the fiberglass just so it doesn't look quite so obvious that it's had a repair on there I know it's not necessary but I'd just like to make it look half decent if someone looks underneath they can see it. hopefully a decent job's been done so now we need to do is get that but we're back on that. <laughs> Let's carry on. Started the old cab up, there we go, full set of lights, look at that. Feels awesome with all the fog lights and everything on. I'm pretty pleased with how that's come out. Let me just switch them lights off. Just warming the cab up before I go out. It hasn't been to be a bit sluggish if you uh, try and pull away. Why is that beeping? There's keys in it. Yeah, it tends to be a bit sluggish if you try and pull away without warming it up a little bit. Still got my side lights on, that's why it was beeping at me. But yeah, I think that looks pretty, pretty acceptable, that does. I'm pretty pleased with that. It's no worse than the rest of the bumper, definitely. The rest of the bumper's got all little fine stone chips on it, obviously, from where it gets used a lot, you know, so. Right, so that is that job off the list. I've got to take it down to the garage now and I get a new O2 sensor put in and get the light reset. Um, probably something I could have done but I'm running out of time so I need to get it done quick so right then that is going to be it for this episode of Mech Tech we have got the front end of the cab looking like it should do again now rather than like a completely mangled mess I was a bit embarrassed driving it around like that I'm not going to lie with the I know it probably didn't no one probably even noticed it because they're just getting the cab and go but to my mind I was thinking oh it looks a bit rubbish so at least we've got the front end looking like it should again now. I was quite pleased how that bumper came out considering the bumper, like considering the corner was completely missing off of it. I think it came out pretty respectable. So hopefully that will be good enough to get it through the uh, TFL overhaul with any luck. So fingers crossed on that one. Um, if you do like these sort of videos, remember it's not just cab videos on my channel. We've got three wheel vans, we've got DeLoreans, we've got Capris, Mark II Cavaliers, Ford Pumas, Citroen C1s. All sorts of different things. Triumph Dolomite, my dad's Triumph Dolomite's on the channel. So there is quite a variation of different cars and work and jobs and all the rest of it on here. There's well in excess of like 80 or 90 videos, I can't remember exactly how many now, on the channel. So obviously have a look at the back catalogue if you want to see some different cars. We had the MX-5 on here last year as well, which is now gone. The Westfield, which is um, on here as well, which is again now gone, but we did obviously a video series on those as well. So have a little look. Um, I have got Instagram, mech underscore tech, 1985, and I have got Facebook, mech dash tech, for little sneak peeks during the week. And all that is left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down there, thumbs up and the notification bell. And if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.